Hello, hello. Welcome to another Scarves and Spikes uh, player ratings video. Uh, it is on the tail end of another draw with Toronto. So <laughs> I hate draws. Yes, I hate draws. Apparently especially... Toronto don't because this is like their, what, fifth or sixth draw of the season? Something like that. Yeah, I'm Bob Bradley is a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to what to think of Bob Bradley in this in this sense. Like I know he's not happy, but they got to be happy with the way it went down last night. That's for sure. Atlanta, not so much. I think it feels a little bit more like a loss. But yeah, for sure. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about the players, some of the players, and dive straight into our scientifically proven rating method. So, uh, you guys got anything before we get started? No. All right. Let's do it. I was going to say, uh, Ted Lasso says draws are like kissing your sister. <laughs> yes, he did say that. Are we I don't not? have a sister. Me neither. Me neither. Did me? I do. I do. Uh-oh. <laughs> so is Ted Lasso um, correct? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's move you on. You don't have to answer I, that. I mean, we, <laughs> I mean it's like cheek kisses. We've had cheek kisses, that's all. Nah. You know, the... Did it feel like a draw? Brother, sister. <laughs> that felt like a lot. Well, oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm off track. <laughs> this is getting weird. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I think we're still Sorry. drunk from the last night. You guys, know, you guys know what I meant. Oh, you two are drunk. I'm I, I had water all night. I'm fine. All right. I'm good. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Who's right. first? First up of the day. I think it's the first time we've had to rate him at all. It's going to be Quentin Westberg. I am ready to go. You guys are. Alrighty. Oh, look at Show that. It. I got a seven. Oh, Holy triple crap, sevens. triple sevens again. That's a spiky Who's hair else? and mean face. <laughs> I like it. I like triple it. Triple sevens. Yeah, um, obviously conceded the goal. Unfortunately, I mean, can't really fault. I don't think you can fault him too much for the equalizing goal. That made it 2-2. But, yeah, a, a, a strong performance back in his former club. Back in his former club in Toronto. Um, had a really good save in the first half to keep it 1-0 after Yakimaka scored his uh, go-ahead goal on a header from Arudu. Um, or I'm Leno, I'm sorry. Um, had a really good save. I can't remember the exact minute, but I kept it 1 0. And overall, good performance. His distribution, though, unfortunately, was a little bit lacking. He had some puzzling passes from his own box that gave possession back to Toronto. That being said, all things considered, it wasn't a bad performance. It wasn't an off the charts performance either, but yeah, a, a, a good performance. Hopefully, um, Next week, he's able to keep keep a clean sheet, and LA United can get back in the win column. But just a tough draw. Uh, again, at the end of the day, don't really fault Westbrook too much for either of these goals. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty much in the same boat. I mean, I think as the game drew on and things got a little more frantic. You, that's kind of where I think you're looking for your goalkeeper to try to calm things down a little bit, as as best as he can from the back. But that being said, uh, you know you, you've also got to rely on your your midfield players to do that. You've got to rely on uh, it's it's a team effort. So you're talking about his distribution. I do think that was that was one of the things that as the the game wore on, there were some yeah like some questionable passes maybe, but. Overall, you know, he he made some some solid saves. He he stopped Bernadeschi from scoring another Olympico, which is good. Uh, so you know, I don't know. It's it's actually I think it's a, a fairly solid start for you know your your next man up goalkeeper. Um, not mad at him. That last goal, again, the entire team got kind of disjointed, disorganized. You probably look at that as a mixture of a lot of factors including when I mean, you're playing away you, you don't have your typical 11 on the field uh 
so the organization isn't going to be there as it would be if, if this was the same chemistry of starters that you would you would normally have so i mean a lot of factors but you can't really put anything as far as the actual goals themselves i think on quentin he right. he stretched out for both of them and and just i think his positioning was okay he just they just he just got beat and that's that happens yeah. that was good with him Tommy? i mean it's it, it was okay I mean, it, it was just fine with what it was. Uh, like I said, the passing was the main thing for me. Just it seemed worse than Brad, and Brad's not very good at it. So, a little concerned about that going forward. But we'll see. Uh, I'm sure they'll figure some things out here. Have uh, more playing time with everybody, uh, you know, out there, and should see improvement at home. You hope. Yeah. Cool. All right. So moving forward, uh, let me ask you this one one more thing about him too. No reason to now try Clement Diop instead, you think? No. Or do we just, just stick with Quentin? No, don't stick with Westberg. I feel like maybe Diop will be in the Open Cup. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, that being said, Diop, I don't know if he has a green card. He might because he's been in MLS for so long, so that's something else to think about. Either yeah. way, I think Westberg you know, does get the start in Open Cup and for the foreseeable future. Yeah, cool. Uh, and for what it's worth, Thought Mob gave Quentin a six point five. Okay. So, close. Uh, all right, moving on. Next one is going to be Machamp Chol. <laughs> Love it, Machamp Chol. He has evolved. Yeah. All right. Going with a nine point two on mine. Nine point two. Yeah. Uh, Hold on. I was not ready. Now I'm ready. Tommy, are you slyly waiting for something? No, oh, no I didn't know. Uh, I, I did eight and Anton Forever. Nice. Like it. Nice. I also did eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you want to start with maybe Tommy? I, I, I mean, what else can you say? He came in in limited time, scores a goal, had a couple nice runs on, on the ball like we saw last week. Um, you know, when he came in, he, he was making some, some fast runs or I think maybe it was at the bends, uh, when he, when he came in and, and, and made a, a few nice runs and he, he continues to do that. So, I mean, you can't, can't, I don't think you can rate him like it. I'm, I was thinking like six or seven there, but I was like, no, he came in, played very limited minutes and he did a great job. So yeah, let's might actually give him an 8.5. There you go. <laughs> updated you know, talk myself over. yeah yeah <laughs> so, no um, so so have, so have you for chop i mean he gave that first level of this goal you know, what a moment for him of course fortunately it doesn't hold up for atlanta but at the same time so happy for him as you said tommy he comes in limited minutes what minute did he come in again how long did he play i want to say like a half hour yeah i was about to say it was it was about a half hour i think yeah but um yeah, um, Pandita's talked about you know guys like Chop, guys like um, others that maybe don't get starts every day. You say, you know what? If you show me that you're ready to play, I'll play you. Obviously, he has his players that won't ever leave the eleven, like Almada and Robinson, etc. But you know, he's saying essentially, show me that you belong. Show me that you deserve playing time. Uh, where they're being training or on the pitch and I think Chol, as you said Tommy in very limited minutes came on and affected the match pretty much immediately terrific header um, to put Lenny in, in front and again unfortunately it doesn't hold up but still gonna chop and you know again so happy for him to get his first goal yeah and, and it was the 65th minute that he came on so okay you're looking at yeah, about a half, hour, half hour total right um yeah, I mean, I agree with everything. I, I think I rated him so high because I feel like he has been dropped into multiple positions if you go back to the preseason this year already. And he's mm -hmm. he's done well wherever he's played. I mean, he's played as a number nine. He's played as a winger. He played essentially last night as a number 10. <laughs> so, and he's all over the field when he gets out there, you know. 
he's becoming a very, very versatile tool. And I think what everybody wanted him wanted to see out of Machop over the past couple of years is him scoring some some header goals because he's so freaking tall, you know. And yeah, he is. And he did it. He came in last night. He did the job and and looked. He's looked so confident on the ball in the past uh, few months that we've seen him. I don't know what he did in the offseason. I don't know if there was anything different that happened. Um, I was going to ask him at the training ground a couple weeks ago when we saw him, but he started talking about his time with South Sudan, and it was such a great story. I mean, you don't want to interrupt something like that. But uh, it just seems like he's he's progressed rapidly. So uh, the fact that he's just been able to be like a Swiss Army knife at times is is why I gave him my rating. So, And I'm just I'm happy for him. So excited to see. Can't teach height, and he's uh, 6'2". That's so. true. That's so that true. Is. And yes, and shout out to the, the Anton Walk shirt. That's awesome. Yeah. He, he said, uh, and in my article, by the way, it, it'll be coming out tomorrow, uh, the quotes article, may, maybe from now on, because, you know, for various reasons, but Monday is a better day for that kind of stuff. But he mentioned in, in his quote last night that uh, – he was just hoping to nick a goal at some point because he's he's been wearing that shirt and he, he was planning on wearing it the whole season. So he finally got his chance last night. And and take that yellow card all day, 100. percent Yeah. So <laughs> no, dude. And good for him. Yeah, good for him. So and for what it's worth, Fat Mob gave him a an even seven last night. Okay. So that's fair. Don't know if the yellow card. I don't know if they. I'm, I'm assuming maybe they take that into consideration. Uh. And the way they do the ratings, I felt like seven was maybe a little low for a goal scorer. Mm, but I feel it's pretty eh, fair, whatever. considering how long he played. But yeah, yeah, that's what it is at this point. If you're gonna take your shirt off, you got to make it look more impressive when you when you take it off. Like, gotta do a dance, <laughs> and then maybe you get more points for that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Call yeah. them out. All right, moving on. Next one is going to be midfielder Santiago Sosa. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, are you ready? Sure. Yeah. I'm out of the These low. are going to be low scores. <laughs> All right. You guys ready? Okay. Ooh, All right. So I got a 5.8. Tommy with the 5 even. Sydney with the 7.1, so we're all over the place. Yeah. All right, Tommy F will score, so why five? Uh, <laughs> passing, he, he's really good at making some nice passes, but I felt like he was consistently behind on the play, like trying to catch up to it. Uh, at the end there, you know, I don't know if he could have stopped that, that goal from going in, but definitely looked like he was going to slide in and, and cause a penalty there. <laughs> I mean, he slid. Yeah. Pretty far. I was like, oh, I was like those, uh, those gifts of like those people like sliding in the water, like just going like thirty <laughs> yards. Like it just felt like he was just gonna keep on sliding from there. I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I, I've I've lost a lot of faith in Sosa over the past year, and there's been a, a couple good performances that I've seen, but nothing that's been overly impressive from him. And I, I don't know. I did, I thought this was gonna be a big moment for him. And we definitely missed the toughness of what Ibarra was. And Sosa is not that player. And I, I thought that we mm-hmm. lost a lot of grit, especially when Yakamakis went out. And I, I know it's not Sosa's fault, but it, it's just he didn't provide anything else special. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty much in line with that. I, I think you we, we mentioned it last week on the show that this was – this was going to be one of those where you you needed um, kind of a breakout game from Sosa. And I, I don't want to say that he had a bad game, but I just don't think no. he did necessarily what was needed. And, you know, as, as your main defensive midfielder in the situation uh, in a match like this, you have to stand up and, and – Take control of your your the rest of your midfield, especially considering you're playing with kind of a, a strange mixture of midfielders with Almada being out and everything. So you're having to play a guy as a number ten who's not a number ten. Um, 
and there's a lot of fluidity between those those midfield positions and you know at times it, it didn't look bad but there were times where Toronto was just able to walk right through the midfield and that that goes all the way back to your defensive midfielder your number six which is where Sosa was at and I just you know it, it's nothing that just blatantly stood out as bad I mean I, I got to go back and watch the goals again specifically and see kind of his movement on each one but I will say you know I, I think had the organization been there for the for both of those goals you we, we would be having a different conversation right now and I probably would have had my my two nil prediction come true for once and yeah I, I just I just think I just think he needs to be a little sharper a little quicker yeah I yeah I rated him a little higher than you guys because he has some you know key tackles he ultimately again it's a two two draw so maybe one tackle less than he should have had um decent performance not a great performance Again, I don't want to give a guy like a f- below five or anything like that because I don't really feel like anyone deserved be- below five a night like this. Um, but at the same time, you demand a little bit more from your defensive midfielder. And I agree that he lacks the bite that Abara has. And it's unfortunate that Abara had to miss out on this one due to the red card. So I'm sure his return will be very welcome against Chicago on Sunday. But again, no, I, I, I agree pretty much with what both, with both of you were saying. And while well, you guys rated him a little bit lower than I did, um, I'm kind of in that seven, of uh, if any vague, maybe high six, 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 seven, or something like that. So, Cool. Uh, interestingly enough, Fought Mob actually gave him a 7.1 as well. So, okay. Way higher yeah. than, than me and Tommy. <laughs> You win, Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> Close. I win. <laughs> I, and I will throw this out there in his defense. This is the first time he has played 90 minutes since September of last year against Philadelphia Union. Mm. And I do kind of wonder if some of it was like, I, I just kind of felt like he looked a little gassed at the end. And I mean, I don't think he should have any issues with fitness by this point. But yeah. as much as you do on the training ground, that's not going to replicate an actual 90 minute match. And maybe it's just that he, he hasn't had the consistency to play 90 minutes uh, in such a long time yeah. that maybe you will start seeing some of that early, you know, the 2021 Sosa kind of come back, but we'll see. Yeah. Consistency might be it for him. I mean, once you, some players have to get into a rhythm. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I don't know if that's going to happen for him, though, because, yeah. you know, Ibarra, I, I know he took a couple of days off from practice last week. He was probably banged up from that collision as well. So as long as he's OK, I, I see Ibarra just hopping right back in next week. No, yeah. agreed. 100%. Definitely. 100%. All right. Moving on to the next one. We're going to talk about Luis Arujo. Okay. Shout out to uh, ETL UTD James. Uh, I don't know. His, I think that's his full Twitter. Uh, but he yeah. like posted uh, this morning every single touch that Aruju had, and I made sure to mm-hmm. do some studying because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't too harsh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm interesting or interested to see uh, everybody's numbers here. And I'm sure we're going to get comments about them, you know, yeah. on YouTube and on Twitter and all, because he's such a polarizing figure for some reason right now. And I mean, we had our our watch along last night, and we all talked about it at points where we gave our opinions. Uh, and I'll, I'll save that for after we give our scores. But yes, he's just be, he's become the next Moreno in terms of polarizing figures for Atlanta United. So, yeah. all right, what you guys got? Scores. I have six and a half. Tyler six. I got a six point eight. Tommy seven. Meh. <laughs> Meh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'll I'll go first since I have low score. Um, I think we kind of implied it throughout our discussion leading up to the ratings. The thing about Luis is he makes so much money to do. To Tommy, you wrote it down. You're bored. Meh. He's making what almost five million dollars a year. At least that's what he made in 2022. Um, salary and compensation combined, according to the MLS salary guide. Like in this game, 
you, you want your DPs to take over. And how many times have we seen Luis Aruju truly take a match by the scruff of the neck and make a difference? I mean, you can count it on maybe one hand and that's just not good enough for a player making that much money. I mean, you saw Bernadeschi, uh, just how involved he was in the match and what a handful he was for a Lady United at various points of the match on Saturday. I, I, I credit to Aruju, I think he had the assist to Chol, correct? Yeah. He assisted on that goal. Yeah, credit to him on the assist, but you need so much more from him. And I don't want people to think we're just using him as a whipping boy. It's just that for the amount of money that Lady United are paying for him, and the amount of money they paid for him to bring him over from France, you need so much more from him. He's a designated player. He's not a TAM player. He's not a GAM player. He's a designated player. And by a designated player, that implies that you're held to a much higher standard than anyone else on the pitch because you're being paid so much money. And you know, I'm just really tired of having this conversation about Louise. He, he wasn't terrible. He wasn't great either, but again, a DP, you expect them to rise to the level of competition and again, have an effect on a match, be able to take the match by the scruff of the neck and say, hey, uh, uh, get behind me because I'm about to do some things to get us to a victory. And yes, again, he had the assist to Chol, but he didn't really do a ton outside of that, to be honest with you. I may have missed it. I may be looking at it through a different set of eyes, but again, just another mad performance, Tommy, as you wrote down from Luis Aruju, and it, it, it's just it's just so frustrating, especially the amount of money, like I said, he's being paid to, I, I, I don't want to say coast through matches or sleepwalk through matches, but just have minimal effect on the match, and it, it's just... You guys go ahead. <laughs> no, hey, you're on a roll. I didn't want to interrupt you. No, um, I'm good. Yeah. yeah My no, soapbox I mean, moment there. It, but the thing is, is you know, again, that's what we were talking about. He's become such a polarizing figure. And last night, I mean, he, he got involved in some ways. But there were stretches of the of the match where he did sort of just yeah. disappear. And you give him credit yeah, for you the can't assist. Have that from a What's that? So you can't have that from a DP, though. No, you're absolutely right, and, and I think I think it's fair to say, you know, for sure, that regardless of what he's getting paid, just the fact that he's a DP, uh, he he just has to step up in those moments. And yeah. this is now the second time, you know, we go back to the Columbus match, which again, hard to take much out of that match anyway. But we <laughs> kept talking about it because. That was the one where you you hoped with no Almada, with no Yakamakis, that your one remaining DP that was playing could could do just do something, make something happen, because that's what DPs do, right? That's what they're supposed to do. Uh, but we all know how that match went. And then last night, no Almada, and then Yakamakis goes down in the 49th minute. So now it's just you know Luis again. And and granted, I actually I felt like Luis's second half was better than the first half uh, immensely in the first half I felt like he was nowhere to be seen but ultimately he's got to stay consistent for 90 minutes and stay involved in the match yeah. make you know make make your presence known and yeah. I will give credit because he does draw defenders he does make movements that that make a backline thing twice and that's part of the job too and now you've got other players that are capitalizing on the space that he creates so you got to give him credit there um i also give him credit for his defensive work all season because that that was something that he didn't do as much last season i feel and it has it has helped out uh, a lot this year so maybe that's why i didn't rate him too too low because yeah. there are improvements being made i think everybody just looks at luis though and thinks you know, he's not scoring MVP caliber, you know, goal numbers yet. So he's a bust. And I don't think that's true. But I also don't think it's a stretch to be like, hey, he's got to have a little bit more that he brings yeah. to the conversation. Exactly. Real quick, and Tommy, real quick before you hop in, um, I want to talk about super quick the Union Chicago Fire match because Jim Curtin said something very interesting to MLS 360 
Julian Carranza, who had a brace against Atlas um, in Champions League, Curtin said during the halftime of Philly Chicago that he was furious with Carranza because essentially called him a non factor in the first half and lit into him during halftime. And Carranza um, responded, had the equalizer as Philly came back for a 2 0 deficit to draw Chicago 2 2. So Curtin made it clear, you know, I hold. Yoni Carranza to a very high standard with him being a DP because I know his quality. I know what he's capable of. He can play anywhere in the world, which is what he said essentially. And Carranza answered the bell. And we need our reader to do that. I'm not saying that Pineda should just peel the paint off the walls and light him up on fire, but we need Luis Arruda to respond and step up, essentially. So, sorry, Tommy. Are oh, you fine? Uh, so, the spaces we talked about this a lot last night everybody was going off about Aruju and you know he, he disappears at times and i missed a lot of his touches to be honest just because there's nothing spectacular that really sits out he runs into a runs into a lot of players um there was like maybe two times where he did make a nice run and got past his his defender and it looked good but he, you have to expect that your DPs are going to be able to, like you said, take take the game into their own hands at times. And it seems very rare that he's able to do that. We haven't seen it since that quarter of the season that he came in. When he came in that quarter of the season, which is why you both wrote articles and saying that he could be MLS MVP a couple, you know, last season, was because you saw those those glimpses. He seems slower. I don't know if that's true or not. But it seems like he's he's not as fast or he's just not getting around. Maybe it's these players know what they're trying to do and they're defending him better than what they were. That could be the case. But I think that in, in, in this next transfer window in the summer, I think that you have to move on from him. I think that you have a Yakamakis who is scoring. Hopefully he's healthy. But you got he scored a goal in every game he started. You, if you are able to keep Amada at least until the end of the year, which is the hope, I think you owe it for, your, for the team and the city to make an MLS Cup run. And I don't think that Aruju, and it's not just this isn't just short term. This is long term as well. I, I think that you need to better invest in in that position. So I, I think that I mean you could even just go get another Tam type player to to play on, on the right side like Ntn and yeah. you know maybe put that DP somewhere else in the midfield, um, wh however you want to do it. But I think that you can get a cheaper player and get s probably a lot of the same production that you get out of our Rougie right now. That's fair. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. So we always knew he was going to be the, the one that, that was going to take up probably the most time because he is, again, he's become that polarizing figure and he's kind of turned into the enigma. I think that Moreno maybe was last season in the sense that you know he's got it, you know he has the ability, he's got the talent, but there's just something not clicking 100% of the time. And, yeah. you know, if if Pineda and Arujo, they can figure that out and unlock whatever it is that, that he's kind of holding back, then I think by the summertime, we're having a different conversation. But that has to happen, though, and, and it just yeah. does not happen consistently enough. So... Yeah, we'll see. Agreed. And with that, yeah. we'll move on to our last player. I don't know if we've rated him yet this season either. I don't know. But Brooks Lennon. The Heineken Before man that, of the match. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Fat Mob. Before by that, the way, what does Fat Mob have on? Yeah. With eight. So he got okay. a full eight. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Interesting. All right. Lennon. Cool. Lennon. What you got? 8.5. 7.5 for me. 7.2. 7 one nostril. One nostril. <laughs> um, I don't know, I'm actually kind of second guessing my score a little bit. I think I think I probably should have gave it a little higher. Um, mm. He so Brooks came in. Uh, he's he's the workhorse, right? He's he's your your guy that's always going to be there. He's always going to be doing what he does. The one nostril thing, it's a joke. Yeah, he took the I guess I guess it was an elbow or something in a uh, on a corner. 
in the box, uh, helped out the play in, in favor of Atlanta, but he felt it. And then he played with, with a nostril plugged for, I don't know if it was the whole match, but for at least, at least a halftime. So he provided the assist on Yakamakis's goal off the corner. And we, you know, we haven't seen Lennon taking as many corners on that side of the pitch since Almada, but he put that one. I felt like it was on a dime. And I also feel like this was something that maybe was rehearsed. Maybe Yakamakis and him, maybe that's part of that chemistry developing where, uh, you know, your striker, your taller guys, they're going to tell you where they want the ball. And, you know, the way that Yakamakis made that run out away from the pack and, and was able to perfectly head that ball all the way across into the, the other side of the net. I might be giving them all too much credit, but I, I think, you know, it, it worked out well. It looked good. Yakamakis has the talent and Brooks Lennon's got the talent to put a ball in places as well. Unfortunately, last night there was a couple of crosses that he sent kind of wayward. Um, and and if that's always a conversation, right? On Twitter, everybody's like, oh, he, he won't, you know, his crosses are all over the place. I don't know because I, I do feel like he, he does get, the, he makes the runs. He makes the, the very vertical runs. He draws defenders out away from, from the center. And he's very good at doing that. I think now you've got a target up top that is going to be able to take advantage of some of those crosses. And I, I'm not going to harp on the crosses because I feel like they're, they're not as bad maybe as some people say. But ultimately, last night, he did exactly what he had to do. He came out. He got you an assist very early on. And, I mean, I thought he worked pretty hard for the rest of the match. Defensively, again, i got to go back and watch the goals. I don't know necessarily that anything was on him. But that last goal did come from that side. So, you know, maybe, maybe retroactively adjust the ratings a little bit. But um, I just thought it was a, it was a, it was a solid performance. And he did what he had to do. Yeah, de- defensively, yes. he oh. he was great. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, he, that's that's why I, I rated him so high. I know the assist was nice, but defensively, there were there were multiple times where he just cleaned up anything that that needed to be there. Um, I thought it was probably one of his best games of the season. So if he can keep that up, especially when you know you're a little bit shorthanded in other places, um, and he leads by example. I mean, this guy just works he runs and until you know a banana peel knocked him out last season he was consistently you know our iron man but I, i'm very happy with with what i saw from him and you know trying to create chances as well and still some you know crosses here and there that just makes you just say who are you aiming that at but that happens <laughs> with every player so nice nice on the assist and just keep it up going into next week Agreed. Yeah, that's why I kind of docked a half a point or two. Uh, yeah, just to do the overcut crosses. But um, yeah, perfect perfect delivery to Yakimakis. Uh, yeah, as we said, hopefully Yakimakis is okay. But a yeah, perfect delivery to him. And hopefully that chemistry continues to build throughout the season. And this could be a very strong partnership as Atlanta United, as we kind of talked about, trying to push toward not just playoffs, but MLS Cup. But. More of that, please, from Lennon and Yakimakis. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Fop Mob, kind of in between all of us, gave him a 7.7. Okay. So, that's fair, I think. Like I think maybe I was a little too harsh, but uh, yeah. Nothing to gripe about by any means. Yeah. So who was the highest player on there? On Fop Mob from yesterday? Is that Ruju? Uh, out of the ones that we did, Arujo, yeah. Well, no, just out of just out of uh, anyone on our team. Um, let me see. Y'all uh, continue to carry that on while do I pull you, it up. Do you have to type in each name, yeah. or is that? Yeah, I was trying to see if if we had a uh, a way to look at it. Uh, yeah, I was just curious um, because I, I'm always interested in these these stats and and. Uh, maybe next time we, we do these going forward, we bring up the highest and the lowest yeah. of each one. Because that, that, that interests me here. 
Yeah, good shout. Good shout. Oh, while, while Tyler looks that oh, up, um, thank you. I got you. it. Oh, you have it? Okay. Yep. Uh, and I, so I'll do a real quick run through. Uh, Yakamaka, 7.4. Arujo got the 8. Lennon got the 7.7. Posedu got a 7.3. Sadich got a 7.1. Etienne got a 5.8. Sosa with a 7.1. Wiley with a 7. Parada and Westberg both with 6.5. And Miles Robinson with a 6.4. Mm. Miguel Berry with a six, Machop with a seven, and Andrew Gutman with a six point six. And no rating at all for Luis Abram. So, <laughs> yes. Abram, Abram, that's deep. <laughs> we can we can spend a half hour talking about some of these, but we'll we'll talk yeah. about those at this on Wednesday. But it is it is interesting though to see. So yeah. we'll start adding that from now on. Good shout. Um wanna say thank you to everyone who showed up for the Watch party last night, Saturday night. Good crowd in there. Uh, our patrons only watch Friday, I should say. Uh, Patreon.com slash Scarves and Spikes. The link will be in the description. Yes, perfect 10 yeah. uh, for the atmosphere. Uh, totally agree with that. Uh, become a patron. That's the only way you can participate in these in the future. Not sure when the next one will be, but we will let you know as soon as we know. We we also gave away the Joseph Candle and the MLS Store gift card. So, Tim yeah, Patreon. Big winners. Yes, congrats to you guys. Um, but yeah, patreon.com slash Scarves and Spikes. Again, the link will be down in the description below. And yes, please become a Patreon. Helps or become a patron, I should say. Helps us continue to bring you great content like this uh, live stream will also always be live player ratings will always be live but for special episodes like ask me anything uh, special guests high quality guests i should say other goodies that we're trying to still put together uh, we will lessen your support but so again patreon.com slash scars and spikes also like and subscribe to us on youtube yes as always 754 followers on twitter in what three months that's yep tonight yes That's nice thank you everybody and three yes. i think as of this 341 on youtube so yes we're working our way up and we we uh love that you guys enjoy the content we appreciate it and uh yeah tell your friends and, and your family and i don't know whoever else tell them to come watch and subscribe as well get the numbers yes, up indeed yes All indeed. Right. i think that is it guys yeah, we'll see you on Wednesday as we get ready for LA United versus Chicago Fire FC. Cool, cool. Have a good one, y'all. Take care, everyone. Thanks. See ya. See ya. Come on. <laughs>